Hey guys, Sean Hamlin with Premier Guitar coming at you with another one of our Winter Gear Slam videos. And today we've got Mark Agnesi from Gibson. Mark, how's it going? How you doing? Doing good. You're in a newly decorate, uh, decorated space there at the headquarters, right? Yeah, this is a little sneak peek from the new Gibson garage here in Nashville, here in the, uh, in the Boom Boom Room, in the uh, private artist relations area. Nice. So you've got four guitars here that you're going to show us. A couple of them, I think we're going to focus on hearing the, the one in your lap right now and then the one to your left. What's the one that you're holding? All right, so these are all new for 2021. These are the new 60th anniversary uh, Les Paul SG Standard and Les Paul SG Custom with the sideways wiggle stick. Uh, commemorating the 60th anniversary of the Gibson SG. So that's like an authentic Vibrola reproduction on it? Yeah. Um, like we do with everything at the custom shop, we got a bunch of original examples. We laser scanned everything. We nerded out for weeks and weeks and weeks and really tried to nail it. This is the most accurate reproduction of that original side pool uh, Vibrola we've ever had. The footprint, where it sits on the body, uh, how the, the angle of the arm sits, how it tucks back away, everything is, is totally correct to those vintage specs. But we've actually modified it a little bit under the hood inside the guts to make it perform a little smoother, to make the, the pitch of the strings coming off the bridge a little bit uh, more of an angle so you get a little bit more tension on it. Some of the, some of the shortcomings of the original have been, uh, have been fixed on this, but it looks completely vintage accurate to the original 61. Nice. What else can you tell us about this one that's unique? I think one of these is actually like uh, what uh, we used to, we've seen Sister Rosetta Tharp play in the, the custom gold videos, is the right? Sister Rosetta Tharp custom. Yeah, the three pickup with the side pull, just like she played. Uh, I mean, like I said, we got original examples. We laser scanned a bunch of stuff. Um, we found some minute differences in 61s that uh, we've never reproduced before uh, in terms of some of the bevels on the body. Uh, and also, like with the early. 335s, they have a little bit of a longer pick guard. We found these early 61s actually have a slightly longer pick guard as well. So this is really the first time that we've nailed all of those aesthetic features of the 61, just like we do on the 59 Les Pauls and all the other guitars from the historic collection in the custom shop. And then it's got the new unpotted Alnico 3 custom bucker pickups, CTS pots, and uh, Black Beauty caps, which are era appropriate for what you would have found in the early 1960s. Cool. Now, when we came into the video, you were playing the net, the uh, bridge pickup. Is that right? Yeah. Should we hear a couple other positions? Yeah. Let me uh, clean up the amp really quick. I'll give you the neck. clean and dirty there nice so is there anything else you want to tell us about this one or before we move on to the other one uh, a couple cool things comes with the um, original brown sg case which you would have seen on the very earliest uh versions of these guitars of course all of the the regular case candy that you'd find uh with a gibson custom shop historic guitar let me switch over to the custom and show you that one because yeah it's the sister row guitar nice all right so this is the new 60th anniversary Les Paul SG Custom. If I may speak just for a second on that, yes, it is a Les Paul. A, a lot of people still aren't hip to that, but these denoted by the Les Paul right here, these are still Les Pauls. Les Paul's name didn't come off this guitar until somewhere in 1963 when it just kind of became known as the SG. So this is in every way a Gibson Les Paul. It's just a Les Paul SG. So on this one, again, we have the accurate body contours the new redesigned side pool Vibrola, three custom buckers, uh, that slightly longer taper on the pit guard, of course, ebony fingerboard um, with the uh, block inlays. And these actually have big frets on them, where the originals from 61 would have been fretless wonder fret, which 
drives a lot of people nuts because they want to bend strings. So we just would take one artistic liberty uh, and the historic accuracy and give people the frets that they want on it. Nice. Now, are the pickups in this guitar the same as in the previous one? Yeah. So we're, again, we still have the unpotted Alnico 3 custom buckers, which is pretty much the humbucker that gets used across the board on all the historic custom guitars that have humbuckers. Closest sound to a PAF that we've been able to recreate from all the examples that we've heard. Really, really great pickup, articulate, lots of note separation, even with a lot of gain. You can kind of hear every note in the core. You don't lose that high E string or anything when you're playing uh, a lot of heavier uh, rhythm stuff. And then they clean up great. Uh, they roll off great. Just really, really killer. Again, we have the, the Black Beauty caps in here with the uh, audio taper CTS pots. Nice. Now, since this one has an extra pickup, do you want to show us how that sounds and then maybe we'll move on? Yeah, let me, um, one of the unique things about the three pickup guitars on your switch, you know, when you're up, you have your neck pickup. When you're down, you have your bridge pickup. When you're in the middle, you have the middle and the neck wound out of phase, which gives you kind of a clacky, clean sound. Let me clean up the amp. I'll just show you that sound really quick. Sweet. That's definitely not a sound you tend to associate with SG. Not a typical Gibson sound, but it's one of those charms that you get on the three pickup, either the Black Beauty customer on this SG, is you get that ability to kind of get that thinner, quackier tone along with that big fat neck humbucker and the big fat bridge pickup. So it kind of gives you that other, other thing that really cleans up great. Cool. Now, before we move on to a slightly different subject, do you want to tell people about the pricing and availability on these two guitars? Yeah, pricing, um, the... Les Paul SG Standard, $49.99, and uh, uh, don't quote me on this one. I want, I, I want to say the custom is $66.99. I'm not in sales anymore, so I don't, I don't <laughs> memorize the prices like I Close. did in my previous life. But I'm pretty sure it's like five grand and about $66.99 on the right, custom. Cool, cool. And then this one comes with the uh, pebble grain black case like you'd find on a 61. Um, also has the little commemorative, I don't know if you can see, I got so much light here, the solid hit. Uh, from the original Les Paul ad from the early 60s on the uh, back control plate as well. Certificate of cool. authenticity, all that stuff. I believe these are going to be hitting stores in the next month or two here. Uh, should be coming early spring. All right, so like I said, we have a slightly different subject here. Moving on to what's called the Murphy Lab, right? Yeah, the new Murphy Lab. We're all very, very excited about what Tom's been doing over there. So tell us about it. This is a sort of a, an option, a new way of relicking, for lack of a better term, any guitar that Gibson makes? The Murphy Lab in general is two things. One, it's a, it's a price list, so it has its own set of models. And then it's also uh, a menu that if you're doing a made-to-measure, you can then apply any level of the aging to a made-to-measure order. With the price list, there's 50 guitars, which we basically took a, an inventory of the most popular aged most popular ordered aged guitars that would come through on Made to Measure. And we took those particular guitars and those finish and we just put them on the price list. You can just order, you know, a heavy aged TV Junior, which I actually have right here, which is killer. Um, but like, you know, the colors that were most popular in the level of aging that was most popular, those are on the price list now. Um, and then you can also, if you're doing your own Made to Measure and you have a certain color, that you dig and you want an aged Pelham Blue or whatever, you just order it Pelham Blue and then you add your level of aging that you want uh, as a custom feature. And is it, am I remembering right that there are like four different levels of aging? Yeah, so there's four, there's four different levels of aging. I'll kind of explain them to you as we go through. Because um, I know there's, the jury is still out in the comment section as to whether or not people like aged guitars. And I've been reading all the comments uh, about uh, people's thoughts on aged guitars. 
really the idea behind this, just like with what we do at the custom shop, is to just bring it one step closer to the, the vintage guitar ownership experience. You know, like there's no original Sunburst Les Pauls in my immediate future. You know, I'm not gonna be buying any $400,000 bursts. But if I did, when I opened the case, even the mintest examples of that guitar would have lacquer checking on it, would have a few bumps and, and, and dings on it. So, um, you know, it's not about trying to make your guitar look beat up. It's about when you open up that case, you really feel like you're playing an original and it gives you that, that vintage guitar ownership experience that so many of us just will never be able to afford to buy the originals. So that's kind of what and why on the Murphy Lab. The first level of aging is, is called ultralight aging. And like I said, even the mintest vintage guitar from the 50s or 60s is gonna have a certain element of lacquer checking on it, just from weather change, humidity change, the guitar is gonna check. So that's what the first level, the ultralight aging is gonna be. No wear on the guitar, no dings. This is like, uh, like 9.5 out of 10 condition vintage guitar feel when you open that case. Basically, it's just got checking from, from natural elements and weather changing. When you move up to the light aging, light aging is actually my, my personal favorite. So light aging, you'll have the lacquer checking, and then you'll start to see the, the evidence of a little bit of play wear here on the arm, maybe a little bit of thumb on the back of the neck. We're talking like an 8.5 out of 10 condition vintage guitar. You know, mm -hmm. it got played, but it was very, very well taken care of, but you can tell it's, it's old, you know? The third level is heavy aging. Once you get into heavy aging, that's when you start to see some paint coming off. So you're gonna start to see heavier arm wear up here in the corner, which would happen naturally over time. You're gonna start to see a little bit more coming off here. This is a heavy aged. Um, you can start to see the back of the neck is starting to show like, yeah, this thing has been played for 50 years and just that paint is starting to wear off. The checking gets a little bit heavier on these guitars. And then when you go up to the fourth level, that's the ultra heavy aging, which looks like a guitar that just got played every single night for the last 50, 60 years. You know, heavy, heavy arm wear, heavy buckle wear, um, heavy back of the neck wear, tons of checking, tons of knocks and dings. And we make them at all levels because people like them at all levels. Like I said, for me, the light aging is, man, when you open the case, it's hard to tell if you're looking at an old guitar, if you're looking at, at a new guitar. Uh, Tom has really got it dialed in. The checking looks more authentic than I've ever seen. The, the, the wear patterns, the aging, everything's been taken from original examples of how these guitars age over time. So it's not just, hey, I want to buy a guitar that's all beat up. You know, it's about, I want to buy a guitar that when I take it out of the case, I feel like I'm playing the original thing. I mean, that's what we're trying to do anyway with these guitars is make exact replicas of every feature and every feel and every way the pots move and the, cat and, you know, the things change. To have it open up and have it be a shiny, bright new guitar kind of takes away that I just bought a vintage guitar vibe. You know? So if you can do these subtle things and subtle treatments to the guitar, it just really adds to the ownership experience and the pride when you open the case. If you're into that, gotcha. if you're not into it, we still make shiny guitars too. You can right. put all the wear on it yourself. <laughs> and you said this particular junior is a level three aging? This is a heavy aged, so it's not totally beat, but you can see you're starting to get that arm wear that happens on a junior when it gets played. You know, it's not like somebody sat here and smacked it with car keys or something. This is <laughs> subtle, but, but worn the back, um, you know, the typical edge wear and, and buckle, and then just you played through the neck. You know, that would happen on a vintage guitar. The corners of the headstock start to get a little more rounded off. They're not as crisp. You know, all of the, the features and things you would find if you opened the case and found an original 57 Les Paul Jr. that you would kind of expect to find and, and would be excited to pick up and play. That's what we're trying to recreate. Now, before we have you play us out on that Jr., because it's got to sound great, do you want yeah, to try to like give it. people an idea sort of, it, I'm sure it's hard to tell people, well, age, aging level one costs this much, blah, 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 because it's there are a lot of different factors on the model and appointments, right? But can you try to give people sort of a general idea? It is a set menu of pricing. Um, okay. 
man, I'm trying to, <laughs> I better not, I, I, I think ultralight aging is like a $400 upcharge. It is not an, a, an absorbent amount of money okay. um, Some to, to get your guitar lacquer checked, which would basically just make it look like kind of a, a mint original guitar that sat in the case and had some checking. Light aging, I think, gets up around 800, I think around 1600 to 2000 for heavy, and then, I, yeah, I, I don't want to misquote prices, but yeah, yeah. Um, it's not um, an absorbent amount of money uh, to add Murphy Lab treatment to the guitar. Nice. And the price list guitars that we make are literally the, the price of the guitar on the regular price list plus the, that Murphy Lab aging price. You want to tell people where to go online to find out all that stuff about the Murphy Lab pricing and Murphy the Murphy Lab is going to be coming very soon. You're going to start seeing the guitars in stores worldwide, I think, around the end of March. So just keep an eye on Gibson.com, Gibson Custom Shop. Um, there will be more information coming, more photos, so you can kind of... It's, this isn't best for showing the details, because the checking is really what makes these guitars amazing, when you see the checking up close. Um, so those things are, are coming soon. Uh, and yeah, you're going to start seeing these guitars. They're going to be staged worldwide in stores coming towards the end of March. So the wait is almost over. I can't wait for everybody to, uh, to see these things, pick them up and play them. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us, Mark. Thanks for joining Dude, us, everyone out me. there. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any other uh, Gear Slam videos or riff rundowns, rig rundowns, hooked, all that stuff. And uh, join us next time. Can I play this thing? Yeah. Okay.